You know, many, many years ago, uh, American Bandstand started in Philadelphia, and uh, it's been on the air. Now we're in our 25th year, and there's a man from Philadelphia who occasionally, when the spirit moves, talks about those old days and reflects on it, and he's, we've been the butt of a lot of his jokes along the way, and I'm so delighted because he's one of the most talented guys in our entertainment business. He has his own NBC television series starting uh, in January. It's called Snip. And he's one of the brightest comedic men in our world. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Brenner. Oh, a vision of loveliness. What is this thing here? This is, uh, Isaac Hayes gave this to me. <laughs> it's one of his old right, work. Would you sit shame. down, sir? You remember the Philadelphia days, the early days of American Bandstand? Was that part of your youth at all? Sure. My friends used to dance on your show. Uh, the Lamorgia brothers were my neighbors. You remember the Lamorgia that? brothers. No, that's faded in memory. Oh, there, there, uh, there were nine brothers. Tough. Nine brothers. They were three months apart. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You're kidding. When I first ran into you, you were a, a television documentary producer and all. Did that help you in your life? Yeah, because when I used to you see the executives used to come down and look at the uh, documentaries. I did very serious documentaries. And it really helped me get into comedy because they used to look at them and say, you're kidding. <laughs> you must be joking. <laughs> were, were you a funny guy then or did you begin to develop that sense of humor? No, I was funny. You know, to get through school, you got to be funny. You know, most of the people here, they, they await every time you come here because we are fraught with questions, things we want to ask. And uh, are you get ready to do the interrogation routine. Sure. Joanne, you got the first one over here? All right. Where do you get your ideas? Where do you get your ideas? Um, my ideas for comedy, you mean? You know, my strength? Yeah, I just, from every day, like uh, walking down the street, something will happen. Like I had a, a fellow come up to me on the street. I got a great idea, I think. A fellow came up to me on the street and he said, uh, Do you have any spare change? And I said, oh, man, I'm glad I ran into you. I was just ready to throw these quarters in the street. <laughs> <laughs> and then it becomes uh, part of the act. Uh -huh. All right, fair enough. Over here, who, uh, gentleman in the first row down here? Yeah. What's the worst joke you ever told? Say it again. What's the worst joke you What's ever told? What's the worst joke you ever told? Yeah, the one I just told, I think. Is, uh, <laughs> no, uh, I had an idea for a joke. I thought this was funny, and the audience didn't. I was talking about my, my cousin, Fat Shirley. Now, I'm telling you, this is a bad joke, OK? Yeah. Shirley and I were talking about Fat Shirley, and I said that uh, she was, it was a shame for her because at recess, she couldn't play with us, you know, because it was a shame the way she was that she couldn't play in games like hide and go seek because she couldn't find a place <laughs> you know, big enough to hide in. Except once she, we, she hid in a, an empty warehouse, but we found her. Her legs were sticking out the windows. It's <laughs> terrible. No, it's the worst joke I ever told. I agree. We'll take a vote on that one. But somebody over, yes. Vegas and you didn't sing. Do you sing? Do you ever sing? Well, I was one of those kids that used to in school get put into the monotone section. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the teachers used to say, all right, monotones, remember, they put us in a special place. They say, monotones, remember, when we go into assembly, no singing, just move your lips. <laughs> <laughs> that was your specialty? Yeah, I, I was up there going, I do, do a great lip sync. Last question over here. Who had lady with the blonde hair and the gray fedora, no less. <laughs> Do you consider yourself an actor, a comic, or just a sex symbol? An actor, a comic, or a sex symbol? <laughs> well, until I looked at you, I didn't think a sex symbol, but now... Uh, <laughs> uh, I think... Uh, well, I thought of myself as a sex symbol, but I think the girls thought of me as a comic. They're always saying, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you did a thing on television that was a put-on of all of us here, because for 25 years we've been rating records. Can you do a little bit of an excerpt? Because sure. that's my next spot. Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Sure. I used to, uh, what I always admired about Dick Clark is the way the uh, records were rated. I always said that he had the easiest job in America. All Dick Clark did five days a week was, what do you give the record, Mary Margaret? 34. Mary Ellen, what do you give the record? 34. Tony, what do you give the record? 34. OK, we'll figure out the average right after this commercial. <laughs> <laughs> David Brenner.